Hey everyone, good morning. Mayor Paul here, uh, 4-16, April 16, it's about uh, 10.40. Uh, we didn't do a regular press briefing today, uh, as didn't really have a whole lot to go over, and we're trying to get on a uh, really a three-time-a-week press briefing schedule now going forward, but still got the opportunity to come to you uh, through Facebook to give you some updates, so I thought I would do that today uh, and provide you a forum to provide comments and questions and feedback of which I know there is a lot of that right now. So uh, first and foremost, I want to thank all the great people who have reached out with such kind words. I mean, I got a whole, I'll show it at some point, I got a whole stack of cards and letters and support um, from people and it just, it means more than you realize. So thank you for doing that. Those of you who have done that, it means a lot. Some of the cards are, hey, we appreciate you. You're wrong on this. Don't agree with you, but I know you're in a tough spot. I even like those cards. Okay, we're gonna agree to disagree on issues and uh, and positions, and so that means a lot. You know, I was thinking last night after our council meeting, as I got, uh, I was laying in bed, um, about our one Sioux Falls framework, and I've, I've I talk about that a lot in the city as our decision making matrix, and uh, th this is what that is. So. This is a framework that we established um, oh, maybe a couple months after I was in office. And you see kind of the four core tenets of that framework. You have safety and health, you have housing, you have workforce, and you have engaging people. And when you talk about COVID response, we're looking at all those. How are we keeping people safe and healthy? How are we not... Uh, uh, taking people out of their homes and ensuring people um, don't, aren't removed from their homes or, or have the ability to make their rent payments and so forth. And, and then the workforce piece is obviously a huge one. It's why, you know, months ago we put this into place and we have that as a core tenant. And then engaging people, meaning how are we keeping constituents involved in the process of our decision making uh, along the way? And so last night we had a city council meeting. Honestly, it was one of the best and worst city council meetings I've ever had in that it was the best in that um, we had great dialogue and great discussion. And I saw just democracy in action. It was great. We had a lot of people uh, provide input and feedback on the decisions we're making as a city. Uh, you as the citizens need to rest assured that we don't live in a dictatorship and we don't live in an oligarchy. I mean, if I want to do something, I have to bring it to our city council and they get a chance to uh, uh, to weigh in on it. And they did that last night on several things. One was our transit. Um, we are changing up our transit. We're going to have to reduce some transit routes. We're seeing a tremendous drop in ridership. 65% uh, in fixed route, 85% in paratransit. A lot of our drivers fall into the category of the governor's executive order asking them to stay at home, not asking, requiring them by executive order to stay home. Uh, and so we made some changes to our transit route. You can find out more about that at SiouxFalls.org slash Sam. What caught uh, most of the attention, obviously, was uh, the stay-at-home ordinance that I brought forward for our council to consider. Um, a stay-at-home ordinance essentially meaning um, essential businesses, essential critical infrastructure businesses as defined by the federal government. Uh, those employees should go to work, do their job, come home, uh, and only really leave your house for essential activities. Essential meaning caring for a friend, uh, family member, uh, groceries, pharmacy trips, uh, getting gas, uh, just some of the what, what are defined in that ordinance as the essential activities. People have asked, well, how is that different than what we have already? Uh, you know, the biggest difference is that um, it's no longer uh, just a suggestion. We'd be putting it into law, and we would be enforcing it uh, in law. Now, when I say enforcing it, does it mean we'd be writing out tickets all over the city? No, it, it'd be more just to educate people. Uh, I used the example this morning with someone of, uh, when they were asking me about it, I said, think if, if we just said, hey, we'd like you on the interstate just to use your best judgment and not go too fast, okay? It's our recommendation. We can't enforce it, but it's our recommendation. It'd be a bad way to drive on the interstate. But if we say, listen, we have a law. This is a speed limit. Most people are going to abide by that speed limit. Now, maybe they'll tick over a little bit, um, but it keeps people, it keeps honest people honest. And uh, in the case of COVID, it will keep honest people honest and making sure that they 
uh, mitigate uh, and stay at home right now, which we need people to do. That being said, I very much understand the other side of that issue. And I said to my counsel last night that I could, uh, I could have stood up two times last night and I could have presented the ordinance that I was presenting. And then I could have stood up a half hour later and presented the converse of that um, and done it with assurance and confidence because it's that challenging, it's that difficult. And so um, I want you to know that there's there's a lot of tension around this subject, a lot of tension on trying to figure out what we do as a city uh, to keep people safe, protect our liberties, protect our economy, not taking it lightly. Uh, as you can tell by my hair already and the gray and everything else, uh, this is starting to take its toll and we're, we're getting through it and we're making, uh, um, we're making hard decisions, but uh, we'll see what our city council decides to do next week. I think there's going to be a lot of conversation that I'm going to have with them, questions they're going to have of us to determine if it's the right thing to do. And if they ultimately determine it's not, um, that's okay. And we'll figure out what we do going forward. Uh, that's what's great about Sioux Falls. That's what's great about a democracy is uh, uh, when we disagree on something, we agree to disagree and we move forward with our next path uh, uh, to keep people safe. You know, uh, I get this question or the statement a lot about uh, Republican approaches or Democrat approaches. And listen, I am not an R or a D mayor. Uh, I'm an M, right? I'm I'm governing the best I can for this city. Okay, not sticking to any partisan uh, talking points, not any partisan script. I'm just trying to make decisions that I think are best for our city. Um, and people say, well, that decision will cost you a re-election or that decision, you know, won't sit well with your base. My base is the city, okay? And re-election, if people think I'm making decisions based on re-election, you're sorely mistaken because uh, that, that'd be a terrible, you, sh you should not trust any leader who makes decisions based on re-election. Um, quite honestly, who would want this job again right now, you know? Uh, so you need to know I'm trying to make the decisions that I think have to happen now, not based on an election, not based on a party, based on Sioux Falls. And that's what we're trying to do here. So last thing I'll say, continue to give comments, emails. I appreciate it. I don't read any of them because I got to stay out of there, man, because uh, it's, it's, it's rough. This is a vitriolic topic right now. You can only send comments to my office. I got a staff right now that's, uh, that's helping me respond to those. I do like to hear from people. Honestly, that's the engaging people portion of our Once Who Falls framework. I mean, that's what makes our democracy great is you can have direct access to your elected officials. So in the meantime, between now and the second reading we have of this uh, potential uh, stay-at-home ordinance, whether that passes or not, there's a ton you need to be doing. And that is you need to continue to do what we've already been doing. Okay. Limit your trips, stay at home, keep your kids at home if you can, and don't take them to the store with you. Support local business to the extent you can. Uh, eat out, but eat in by taking out, carrying out, uh, getting delivery, uh, social distancing, hand hygiene, uh, wearing masks if you're comfortable doing that and if you feel that's appropriate. Just a lot of different uh, things you can continue to do again to work on this this is what we're continuing i leave this at my desk right there because this is um, what i continue to look at every day and i want to make sure that i don't end up here in our market and now the latest numbers that we had and i was just on a conference call with the governor just before this and uh models are you know that, that they've shared with us and that we have confirmed with our healthcare system is a mid-may peak for covid in uh in sioux falls so we're at May 16 right now, or excuse me, April 16. Uh, May 16 is a month away. That's mid-May. So we will continue to see cases go up. You're going to hear numbers today. We're going to have, you know, numbers today that will be announced that we'll, we're going to have more cases. And whenever we get more cases, we can't say, oh my gosh, we got more cases. We're going to get more cases. We're trying to slow the cases down. All right. We're not trying to stop them. We're trying to slow them down. Uh, and so... The last thing I want to say, and I closed our city council meeting this way uh, last night as well, Smithfield is not an enemy in this, and the employees of Smithfield are not enemies in this. Um, do not vilify employees of Smithfield, okay? Um, there is a 
underlying kind of sense of almost treating Smithfield employees like lepers in our community right now. And that's not appropriate. Smithfield employees are getting tested. Smithfield employees are quarantining if they need to be quarantining. There's no one business that's an enemy in this. There's no one individual uh, class, race, anything that's the enemy. COVID is the enemy. We're all working together to defeat it. Um, there's differing opinions on how we get there, and I respect that. Uh, and quite honestly, I see almost every opinion and understand it. So thanks for what you're doing to keep each other safe. Uh, when you stay home, you keep others safe. Think of it that way. It's not for you. It's for other people. So continue to do that. I know it's hard. We're, I think we, we had a nice 60-degree uh, day coming up this weekend. Uh, still get outside if you can. Stay apart uh, to stick together as we like to say. So be blessed today, Sioux Falls. Uh, enjoy your day. Thanks for your support. Uh, even if you don't support what we're doing, uh, thanks for making your voices heard. We're listening. We're trying. Uh, we'll get through this. Uh, I know that's easy to say. That sounds cliche, but we will. This is an incredible city. Uh, in fact, Wallet Hub ranked us one of the top 10 most resilient cities uh, just a couple months ago. What does that mean? Resiliency is the ability to bounce back based on a lot of factors. And we are resilient. We're resilient people. Um, hang with me. Keep your chin up. We'll get through it, guys. All right? Take care. Be safe.